Hello and welcome back. It is 14 days of sunscreen and today is day 11. Welcome. I'm so excited to do this one. I am jumping into a three for one, <laughs> which I will be reviewing three of the SkinCeutical sunscreens. Now, this is an exciting one because two of the three, I think all three are actually available in Europe. Two of the three are only available in Europe. So if you are an EU or Europe or Canadian or anything basically but American listener or watcher, <laughs> you should be able to get these two pretty easily. And then this one is also available in the US. Now, if you are in the US and you want to get any of the three, you can also get them. That's obviously how I got them. So it's not that hard. I will list everything below if you're interested in any of them. But I do like to review products that are available in other parts of the world, not just America. So it's exciting to do a big brand like SkinCeuticals. And I have three that I'm gonna be putting on my face today. So yeah, that's day 11. I hope you're ready for it. If you are, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead, do so below. And then give this video a like if you do enjoy it. It does help my channel immensely. So with all that said, let's jump into day 11 of 14 Days of Sunscreen. Here comes the sun and I say it's all right. All right, so what I'm gonna do, because I have three of them, I actually was thinking I would do one and then take it off and then put the other on, but I really do like to see the comparison, and especially because some of these are tinted, some of them are matte, some of them are not, I think it'll do a better job of comparison if I put one on this cheek, one on this cheek, and one on my forehead. So that's what I'm doing. And because of that, I'm only gonna do a finger length for each one and not use my little quarter teaspoon. I think that'll just be a little bit more fair. So. With all that said, we're gonna get into it. All right, so we're gonna start with the first one, which is the Mineral Radiance UV Defense Sunscreen. This is SPF 50, they actually all are, and this one retails for $42. You can get this one in the US. I will link all the different places that you can get it, but this one is supposed to be a mineral sunscreen. It has 5% zinc oxide and 6% titanium dioxide. It also has iron oxides in it, which is great because it gives it additional UV protection. I do want to mention that this one does have beta octal salicylate. So if that irritates your skin, if you just don't like it because it's kind of not a mineral active ingredient, then just be aware of it. It is in this one. I love the fact that this one is water resistant for 40 minutes and it does give you a luminous finish with a little bit of a tint, but not really anything too, too noticeable, which is one of the things that I love about it, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Okay, next up we have the Advanced Brightening UV Defense. This one is also SPF 50. It retails for actually about $33 on Cosmetis. That's a website that I have found that ships from the UK, I think from Spain or Portugal into the US, and it's on sale at the moment. Although I think this one might be out of stock, but it's usually pretty cheap from there. This comes in 40 milliliters or 1.3 fluid ounces. So it's a bit smaller than the Mineral Radiance one. This one is a purely chemical sunscreen. It's got some of the older filters and some of the newer ones. So it has avobenzone, octosalate, octocrylene, and then you've been all T150. It also has transexamic acid, which is supposed to help with pigmentation and brightening your skin. This one has definitely more at uh, the most, I would say luminous finish of all of them and has a nice fluid texture. And then the last one, which is the one that I put on my forehead, this is the Oil Shield UV Defense Sunscreen. This one is SPF 50, retails for $29 on Cosmetis again, and is 30 milliliters, so it's the smallest one, which is one fluid ounce. This one is also a chemical sunscreen, and you do have, again, a blend of newer and older filters. This one definitely has more of the newer filters, so if you are in the US, these are ones you can't get, so if it's something you're interested in, in getting those filters, this would be the one for you. It's got homosalate, uvenol T150, tinosorb S, avobenzone, and then ensulazole. And this one is supposed to be mattifying and a dry touch sunscreen. Okay, so now that we've gone over the specs of all three of them, I think these actually highlight the differences and kind of if you want a different type of sunscreen from SkinCeuticals really well because on this cheek we have our mineral tinted sunscreen and then we have a more luminous um, kind of glowy chemical sunscreen and then we have a matte glower, a matte, not glowy, <laughs> and then we have a matte chemical sunscreen on my forehead. So basically you can get anything you want here. I think that said, SkinCeuticals does have more sunscreens. Some of them are only available in the US, some of them are only available in Europe. 
So it kind of depends, um, but these are the ones that I have my hands on right now. But like I said, I do think it kind of gives you the choice of a lot of different finishes and a lot of different types of sunscreens. So I hope you can find something that you like from one of these, or if not, you know, maybe I'll review more one day. But in terms of kind of finish and like the feel of all of them, most of them go on really easily. I would say definitely the tinted mineral radiance and the advanced brightening, which are the two that I have on my cheeks, they're so easy. There's just no work to it. You're not gonna have a cast. They're gonna go on very easily. It's gonna be a quick application. They're super fluid though, so I would caution you against just using your finger length because you're probably not gonna be putting enough on. I find that when I have a more fluid one, measuring it out in the teaspoon is actually the best way to do it just because it is so easy to put on and you can kind of skimp. But the one thing about the tinted side, this is the mineral radiance. If you want to use it as just this, it's gonna have a very sheer amount of coverage, which I think is beautiful. I really love this. This would be like the absolute perfect no makeup makeup because it's not light coverage, it's sheer. I put it on my eyelid and I did find that it creased a little bit. So, you know, it's not gonna be 100% like perfect and flawless, but at the same time, like I don't really mind that at all. And if you want, you can put a little powder or concealer over that. But otherwise it does just cancel out just the most like a minimal amount of redness or whatnot. And I think it's the perfect, like I said, no makeup makeup. It doesn't feel greasy at all. It feels almost like a velvet, like dry touch, like not matte, but velvet matte. And honestly, I'm gonna be pulling this back out again. I, if you've watched any of the other 14 days of sunscreen, I love doing this because I get to find stuff in my collection that I've forgotten about. And this one, spoiler alert, is my favorite of the three. So highly, highly, highly recommend this and you get the most bang for your buck in terms of the amount of product in here. Now on the other cheek, I have the Advanced Brightening UV Defense. This one is a pretty good standard chemical sunscreen. I think it's got some of the newer filters that Americans can't really get, but it doesn't have enough to make me like go out of my way for it. I do like that all of them are SPF 50, so you're getting really high coverage, but I wouldn't say that it's the most like revolutionary thing. I think you can find something equivalent in the US, maybe not having to pay the higher shipping to get it sent over, or if you are in the EU, you probably can find something similar. But that said, there's nothing wrong with it. I just think that like it's a chemical sunscreen. Now, the one that I have the most issue with is the Oil Shield UV Defense, and this is the one I thought I would like the most. While it does give you this really, really nice matte, it's still velvety matte, it's not a dry matte. It's not gonna be good for dry skin, but also I have found it doesn't layer at all. Like if I went to put another layer over this, it would start pilling, it would just be a disaster, and I've had that happen many times. So if you are gonna use this, I would say definitely do one area, get all of the sunscreen you need on it, and then move on. But if you try to do your face, one layer, and then another layer, it's gonna to start to pill. So I just think it's not the most easy to use. And for me, I can find other matte sunscreens that just don't pill. So it's not really something I reach for these days. But in terms of kind of your skin types, definitely, obviously the, um, the oil shield one is gonna be for your more oily skin or combo skin. And then I think on the bottom, I think the advanced brightening one is really the only one that people with super dry skin are gonna like. The mineral radiance is nice, but it doesn't pack a lot of moisture. You could use this if you have drier skin, but I would say definitely go in with moisturizer. You can see it's already not really any, there's no glow to it anymore. So I would say that the advanced brightening is gonna be the best for drier skin, while the other two are gonna be better for normal, combo, and oily skin. So that wraps it up. I am excited to get this one back into my life. I, I keep putting like sunscreens that I've been loving. So I've got the Suntegrity, now I've got the SkinCeuticals, and I've been reaching for them more and more. So this is definitely a good exercise in shopping my own stash, and I hope you enjoyed it, guys. And I will see you tomorrow for day 12. We're getting down to the bottom. Bye, guys.